So Encore Players has a colorful variety show in store for you all tonight. You will enjoy readings, songs, and stories reflecting the many colors of both art and people. What better way to celebrate this year's Reading Colors Your World Summer Reading Program? Our summer reading program is happening right now until August 12th. It's for all ages and it's sponsored by the Friends of the Livermore Public Library. Thank you to Encore Players for putting on this great show. Now, without further ado, please welcome Judy Fenton as she starts the show with a presentation of the Crayon Box That Talk by Shane DeRolf. Wouldn't it be terrible? Wouldn't it be sad if just one single color was the color that we had? The Crayon Box That Talk by Shane DeWolf, illustrated by Michael Letzig. While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said, nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. We are a box of crayons that doesn't get along said blue to all the others, something here is wrong. Well, I bought that box of crayon and took it home with me and laid out all the colors so the crayons could all see. They watched me as I colored with red and blue and green and black and white and orange and every color in between. They watched as green became the grass and blue became the sky. The yellow sun was shining bright on white clouds drifting by. Colors changing as they touched, becoming something new. They watched me as I colored. They watched till I was through. And when I finally finished, I began to walk away. And as I did, the crayon box had something more to say. I do like red, said yellow, and green said, so do I. And blue, you were terrific, so high up in the sky. We are a box of crayons, each one of us unique. But when we get together, the picture is complete. Oh, hello. Do you remember kaleidoscopes? Maybe you have one. It's a tube with mirrors and bits of colored glass or plastic inside. You look into one end while turning the other like this. And the colors and patterns take on wonderful shapes like this. You notice how all these colors work together to create new images. And as they change in relation to each other, your view of their world changes. Now, you could have a kaleidoscope with only one color or two like this, but that's not as effective at moving you, is it? A kaleidoscope is a fun and useful tool to teach Americans about each other. We have many different colors of people here, just as a good kaleidoscope has many different colors. And how those different colored people interact with each other can create lovely things, just as the colors in the kaleidoscope can. If you had only black and white like this, or white only, would that be as effective, as much fun? What do you think? So, Go for color, not just for beautiful flowers and pretty pictures. Fill the kaleidoscope of your life with colorful friends. So many pretty shades of green, but according, according me to Kermit the Frog, it's not easy being green.
It's not easy being green Having to spend each day The color of the leaves When I think it would be nicer Being red, or yellow, or gold Something much more colorful Like that It's not easy being green Seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things And people tend to pass you over Cause you're not standing out like flashy sparkles in the water Your stars in the sky But green's the color of spring Green can be cool and friendly like And green can be big like an ocean Or important like a mountain Or tall like a tree and Green is all there is to be Could make you wonder why, why wonder why I am green. I think it's what I want to be. All the pretty colors of the kaleidoscope remind me of a rainbow, especially during June, which is Pride Month. Did you know that the rainbow pride flag was designed in 1978 by artist and gay rights activist Gilbert Baker? He came up with the design after prominent gay rights leader Harvey Milk urged him to create a new positive symbol that the entire LGBTQIA plus community could rally behind. Our next scene from Love Conquers shows how hard it can be for the LGBTQ community to feel that pride. That went well. Oh! What are you doing? We're not leaving. You think I'm gonna stick around after what your father just said? I warned you. This was a terrible idea. You should have just told him yourself. That's what I was trying to tell you before. Then why did you let me talk you into this? <laughs> let you talk me into... Okay, you know what? You need to chill. I'm sorry. I just wanted to do what I thought was right. It was right. It didn't go the way you had hoped, but it was the right way to go. If we don't go home, then what are we going to do? We have the whole weekend with him. We're going to be ourselves. I'm going to be the same old Monica, same tolerant daughter I've always been. And I need you to be the amazing friend, lover, and ass kicker that you have always been. How do I do that? I mean, what if he keeps making these stupid comments? What if I kill him? <laughs> Just do what you have always done with strangers. Use that quick wit and amazing attitude you've always had. Really? You want me to be like that with your father? <laughs> yeah, fight back. You've never needed anyone's approval before. Why would you want to get his? Because he's your father. I just wanted him to accept us for us. Yeah, well, one thing I know about my dad is that he will respect anyone who stands their ground, who fights for what they believe in. He may not agree, he may not like it, he may not fly the pride flag, but he will respect it. He'll come around, but for now, he just needs to see that from both of us. Are you sure? Remember what you said the other night, love conquers fear? All we have to do is love each other. If my dad can't see the love, then he's the one who has to live with his fear, not us. So, no matching rainbow shirts at dinner? 
Maybe tomorrow. I love all the shades of blue, but did you know that blues can also be a kind of music? The blues originated in the deep south of the United States around the 1860s and is based on African American spirituals, work songs, and chants. Here's an example of the blues. Blues indeed, both the color and a feeling. It's kind of like the sky, not the blue sky of a clear summer day. It's more like the deep azul of twilight when day fades to night, when mirth fades to melancholy. Some say that's the devil's time. When I was young, me and the devil were always together. Sometimes I do miss him. The devil is an amazing guy. He's not at all like those old movies, you know, the one with a little girl with uh, her head spinning around or the little boy with a, with a birthmark. No, no, no. He's more charming than that. He's more like a businessman or, or a lawyer. He's very persuasive. Everything he says sounds like a good idea, yet all his ideas are so very, very bad, often dangerously so. The devil loves a good party. He loves to gamble. <laughs> He loves to flirt. He loves all those moments of merriment that manifest into mountains of misery, the lure of daylight leading to an awfully long night. That's the blues. Bobby Johnson and others wrote songs about it. <clears throat> Sometimes I do miss the devil, but I never miss the sorrow, the darkness, <laughs> the blues. Well, I woke up this morning and the devil was at my door. Well, I woke up this morning and the devil was at my door. I said, good morning, Satan. I believe it's time we go. Well, me and the devil will walk in side by side. side by side I'm gonna beat this guitar until I'm satisfied Multitude of Colors inspired Dolly Parton to write our next song based on a true story from her childhood. After the song became a hit, Dolly's mother made a replica of the original coat, which now hangs in Dollywood. Although this song has been sung by many, our next presenter will read Coat of Many Colors as a poem. Back through the years, I go wandering once again, back to the seasons of my youth. I recall a box of rags that someone gave us and how my mama put the rags to use. There were rags of many colors, but every piece was small 
and I didn't have a coat and it was way down in the fall. Mama sewed the rags together, sewing with love, with every piece with love. She made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of. As she sewed, she told me a story from the Bible she had read about a coat of many colors Joseph wore. And then she said, perhaps this coat will bring you good luck and happiness. And I just couldn't wait to wear it. And mama blessed it with a kiss. My coat of many colors that my mama made for me, made only from rags that I wore so proudly. Although we had no money, oh, I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors my mama made for me. So with patches on my britches and holes in my shoes, in my coat of many colors, I hurried off to school just to find the others laughing and making fun of me and my coat of many colors my mama made for me. Oh, I couldn't understand it for I felt so rich. And I told them of the love my mother sewed in every stitch. And I told them all the story mama told me when she sewed of how my coat of many colors was worth more than all their clothes. But they didn't understand it. And I tried to make them see that one is only poor, only if they choose to be. Now I know we had no money, but I was as rich as I could be. In my coat of many colors, my mama made for me, made just for me. So many shades of red and each one invokes a different feeling. In this next scene from the play Red, Famous artist Mark Rothko and his assistant Ken are discussing the many meanings of the color red and black. Mm -hmm. Black, number four, the first maroon, a pinch of black, twice as much maroon, Ah, come on, come on, come on. What does it need? Uh, mm -hmm. Red. I wasn't talking to you. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> By what right do you speak? By what right do you express your opinion on my work? What have you done? Where have you earned the right to exist here with me and these things you don't understand? Red? You want to paint the thing? Go ahead. Here's red, and red, and red, and red. I don't even know what that means. What does red mean to me? You mean scarlet? You mean crimson? You mean plum, mulberry, magenta, burgundy, salmon, carmine, carnelian, coral? Anything but red. What is red? I meant sunrise. <laughs> sunrise? I meant the red at sunrise, the feeling of it. No, oh, <laughs> the feeling of it. What do you mean the feeling of it? Well, I didn't mean red paint only. I meant the emotion of red at sunrise. Sunrise isn't red. Yes, it is. I'm telling you it's not. Sunrise is red and red is sunrise. Red is heartbeat. Red is passion, red, red wine, red roses, red lipstick, beets, tulips, red peppers. Arterial blood. Yeah. That too. Hmm. Rust on the bike on the lawn. And the apples and tomatoes. Dresden firestorm at night. The sun in Rousseau, the flag in Delacroix, the robe in El Greco. A rabbit's nose, an albino's eyes, a parakeet. Florentine marble, atomic flash. <laughs> Nick yourself shaving blood in the barbasol. The ruby slippers, technicolor, that phone to the Kremlin on the president's desk. The Russian flag, 
The Nazi flag. Chinese flag. Parsimons, pomegranates, red light district, red tape, rouge. The lobster, the lava, scorpions. Stop sign, sports car, a blush. Viscera, flames, dead fathists. Traffic lights, tissue and hair. Slash your wrists, blood in the sink. <laughs> Santa Claus. Satan. So red. Exactly, yeah. What is it? Uh, it's uh, it's strange. I, I, I'm remembering something. The um, the color is what doesn't matter. What dried blood? When the blood dried, it got darker on the carpet. Which carpet? Where my parents died. It's exactly the color. When the blood dried, it, it got darker. That surprised me. I remember being surprised by that. What happened to your parents? They were murdered. Did you say murdered? Mm-hmm. How old were you? Seven. What happened? I honestly don't remember it too well. I remember the blood. The bed was stained with it, and the wall. It, it, my parents are on the bed. It, it was a knife, burglars. Oh. My little sister, she's standing there, just staring. I turn her around and push her out and shut the door. The door handle, it, blood, it's red. And that's all. What happened then? I don't want to talk about it. Can I ask you something? <laughs> Can I stop you? Are you scared of black? No, I'm scared of the absence of light. Like going blind. Like going dead. Can you equate the color of black with death? Doesn't everyone? In your pictures, the bright colors are your passion, your will to survive, your life force. But if black swallows those bright colors, what do you have left? <laughs> Go on, I, I'm fascinated by me. <laughs> Lose those colors and you have order with no content. You have mathematics with no numbers, nothing but empty boxes. Trust me, as you get older, those colors are hard to sustain. The palette fades, we race to catch it before it's gone. That's what the color black is to me. Nature is full of an abundance of colors, but can unseen things have color too? Our next song, The Colors of the Wind, is from the Disney movie Pocahontas and was inspired by Native American poetry and folklore. You think you own whatever land you land on. Earth is just a dead thing you can claim, but I know every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. You think the only people who are people are the people who look and think like you, but if you want of a stranger you'll learn things you never knew you never knew have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned can you sing with all the voices of the mountain can you paint with all the colors of the wind can you paint with all the colors of the wind the forest. 
first. Come taste the sun sweet berries of the earth. Come roll in all the riches all around you. And for once, never wonder. colors how can I choose which one to use that's the question asked in the following scene from Steve Martin's play Picasso at Lapin Agile Pablo Picasso and Albert Einstein along with Picasso's art dealer Sagat are discussing art and the art of creativity in this fictional conversation set in a bar in Paris Hey, Pablo, Picasso. Easelhead. Hey, blue boy, what's with you? Oh, sorry. I was just trying not to have an idea. You have a lot of ideas? Endless. Well, how do you paint something? It seems so impossible. What do you mean? Well, you're an artist and you're always having to come up with ideas. What's it like? I mean, the only idea I ever came up with is when I had to paint my shutters. I had to figure out a color. For a while I thought, hmm, forest blue seems nice. Then I realized there was no color as forest blue. And then I started thinking, what are shutters anyway? And what would their natural color be? Then I realized shutters don't occur in nature, so they don't have a natural color. Then I thought, just take off the shutters. I even started thinking about going to a land where there were no shutters. But then one day I said to myself, green and that was it my process is just like that but leave out the start all the middle parts and jump to the end if i asked myself what color i wanted it would just slow me down i see other painters struggling with it killing themselves over it even and i just don't get their worry i put the brush to the canvas and it comes out the idea is swoop down on me, they fall like rain, they land with a crash. They sunk too. Absolutely, they sunk. You too? Yes, and pop. Well, pop all the time. That goes without saying. They never seem to flow though. Never, flowing is a myth.
a little landscape. It, it's just beautiful. Take it from me, Matisse can paint. See, so go, here's the difference between you and me. You look at that nasty old thing and see a picture of some sheep in a landscape. He's not the only one. Right, he's not the only one. And her me, I see it differently. I see it as an empty frame with something hideous in it that's waiting to be filled up with something new. Advancing out into the unknown, the undrawn, the new thing must be coaxed out of its cave, wrestled with, and finally pinned up on the wall like a hide. And when I look at Goya, it's like he is reaching his hand through the centuries to tap me on the shoulder. When I paint, I feel like I'm reaching my hand forward hundreds of years to touch someone too. I work the same way. I make beautiful things with a pencil. You, you're just a scientist. For me, the shortest distance between two points is not a straight line. Likewise. Let's see one of your creations. Draw. Done. It's perfect. Thank you. I'm talking about mine. It's a formula. So is yours. Uh, it was a little hastily drawn. Yours is letters. Yours is lines. My lines mean something. So do mine. Mine is beautiful. Men have swooned on seeing that. Mine touches the heart. Mine touches the head. Mine will change the future. Oh, and mine won't? Maybe you're a fake. And maybe you're an idiot savant and hold the savant. What the hell do you know about it anyway? You're a scientist. You just want theories. Yes, and like you, theories must be beautiful. You know why the sun doesn't revolve around the earth? Because the idea isn't beautiful enough. If you're trying to prove that the sun revolves around the earth, in order to make the theory fit the facts, you have to have the planets moving backwards and the sun doing loop-the-loops. Too ugly, way ugly. So you're saying you bring a beautiful idea into being? Yes. We create a system and see if the facts can fit it. So you're not just describing the world as it is? No, we are creating a new way of looking at the world. So, so you're saying you dream the impossible and put it into effect? Exactly. Brother. Brother. We've heard how color can be used to inspire hope, pride, creativity, acceptance, emotions, and love. Our final presentation shows how color was used to inspire a movement toward freedom and truth at the Berlin Wall. As an immigrant from Poland, the Berlin Wall has long affected and inspired me. The wall was built in 1961 to separate West Berlin from East Berlin during the Cold War. All the differences of both countries made it a perfect canvas for people to express their opinions, their grief, and their joy. The West Berlin side was completely covered with colors but the East Berlin side was blank because people were not allowed to approach the wall. Without color, the wall was a blank, cold, concrete barrier. But color and freedom cannot be contained. As Simon and Garfunkel wrote, the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls and tenement halls. Graffiti, or street art is raw, 
visual communication painted without permission in public view. The colors are bold and daring and the artists don't stay within the lines. In 1984, Terry Noir, a Frenchman, became the first artist to illegally paint on the east side of the wall. He painted for miles and this revolutionary act inspired other artists. And in the next five years, the east side of the wall was completely covered with images, creating a manuscript of protest. Painting on the wall, he said, made him feel stronger than the wall. Here I am painting on the other side of the Berlin Wall in the death strip. It was taken while the wall was falling down and people hammered heavily, making holes. These holes were so big at some points near Checkpoint Charlie that it was possible to pass through and paint to the other side. With only a spray can or two, I would play cat and mouse with the guards. I would always jump back to the West Berlin Territory before they could catch me. In 1989, Eastern Bloc countries led by Poland and Hungary staged a series of revolutions and the wall fell. I took this photo of the East Side. The words are by an Italian artist. I painted over the wall of shame, so freedom was ashamed no more. Inferno ruled too many years until the people chose the light. I put my faith in you, Berlin, and give to you my colors bright. The Berlin Wall remains one of the largest canvases of graffiti art in modern times. What began as people protesting to be free, artists painted over and created a mural of hope and freedom. Thank you. And now to conclude our program, all of us will read a line from the poem, Write Your Name. In the world of words so bright. Brush the canvas with delight. Be the rainbow from a storm. The sunrise of a lovely morn. Paint the world as you would wish from colors in your artist's dish. Arts may be black or blue. But right, bright red smiles say, I love you. Paint it as the blind man sees. Hear it as the deaf conceives blank spaces upon your wall. Interpretations are meant for all. So paint the world and let it be. You are you and I am me. Brilliant hues enhance your game. And like them, we are not all the same. <laughs> Woo! Bravo! Everyone at home, join me. <laughs> and applauding. You can applaud. On four <laughs> players. I want to I want to recognize each of our talented performers this evening. Donna Blevins, Judy Fenton, Bill Leach, Marsha Howard, Leslie Ann Coker, Leah Blevins, John Hart, Greer Davis, Tim Ackerman. Bruce Kaplan, Maya Alward, Marta Loesch, Joyce Rocha, and of course, uh, their tireless director, Marty Muldoon. 
I haven't missed anyone else, right? I got everyone. All right. Thank you so much. What a wonderful show. Wonderful show. And now we have a bit of time uh, for, uh, for questions and comments from the attendees. Um, if you would like to uh, raise your hand, if you would like to um, be unmuted so you can talk. Um, so, or you can type your, your uh, comments on the chat. Pushpa, did you want to say something? Yes, I, I am delighted to see this show. And each one of you have done a wonderful job. And I have to thank my friend Judy for sending me the link. And that's how I got in here. Just, just, just beautiful. Thank you for doing it. Thank you. Okay, and Jan? Hi, Jan. You're a... Uh... Hello. Hi, Jan. I just want to say I had no idea what to expect. I just knew that it was going to be some type of presentation and it was fabulous. I loved the songs, the poetry. I loved the wall. I loved every bit of it. Thank you very much. It was very entertaining. Nice, nice. Hey, Jan is with Friends of the Livermore Library, one of the sponsors of tonight's program. Thank you, Jan. Uh, let me see what else uh, we got in the comments. Uh, let's see. Victoria says, enjoyable show, great information. Kathleen says, congrats, Encore. I hope you will do it again. I hope so, too, and hopefully not on Zoom, but in person. And if anybody out there who watched it, like Kathy and Victorian and Pushpa and anybody else wants to join us, we're always happy to have new members at Encore. And um, this program will be, I will upload this program on YouTube. Um, does anyone else have any, uh, any, anything they want to say or? Just uh, raise your hand. I can unmute you, and or just type your uh, your questions on the chat or comments. Yeah, I just want to say that I didn't know what to expect either. I've only seen glimpses of it during the <laughs> rehearsal, but just hearing uh, it was very uh, uh, how should I say it? It was very heartening to listen to the songs and the. And what a great way. Today is a, uh, a kind of a important day for California since we're, seem, we're re emerging from the pandemic that has gripped our lives for over a year. And this is really uh, what a great way to, 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 All right. to celebrate that and to celebrate summer reading. All right. Well, looks like everybody's speechless right now. <laughs> um, does uh, anybody, uh, I know Martha, you already said something about the encore players. Uh, I know at the, um, if you, the, the link to their website is uh, on the program and um, I, Join, join them and support Encore Plurist because what they do for the community is very important, as you can see, as you saw tonight. Um, thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Paul, for having us again. We love doing programs at the library. I, we've enjoyed doing it on Zoom. You've given us something to do for the last year, but I'm kind of hoping the next one we get to do will be in the library in person like we used to do. So that's fingers our Fingers crossed. That's our I know uh, we uh, we're headed in the right direction. Uh, we just have to keep going, you know. Tell people to get vaccinated, so we can 
get back to uh, to go to live programs in the library. Um, uh, uh, I just put our, e our email address in the chat. Um, Pushpa was asking about reference material. So if there's something you wanted to know about of, of any of the things we did tonight, if you send an email to Encore Players of Livermore, I hope I spelled it right because I can't see, but Encore Players of Livermore at gmail.com. If you send something there, we will answer you and um, get whatever information you're looking for to you. Okay, well, looks like uh, let's call it an evening. And oh, well, one new message here. Let's see what it says. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Pushpa. Uh, thank you again. Encore players, wonderful program. And um, thank you all for coming, all you at home. And uh, yeah, color your world with reading and art. And thank people. you, Paul. <laughs> all right. Good night, thank everyone. You, Good night. Okay. Bye.